empty multiplayer servers and overall downward trend in player numbers, users on various platforms desperately searching for other folks to race against. This all begs the question, is Autumn Rooster 2 dying? The answer to said question, well, it depends, and here's why. Recently, after being forced to spend way too much time in bed due to some side effects of my second Covid shot, I was thinking about sim racing in general and had a few arguments with myself why some titles do well, while others, like Autumn Rooster 2 in this case, seem to struggle. And that's how I came up with a thesis. A thesis that, and no, I'm not going insane, revolves about AMS2 having an identity crisis. As crazy as it may sound, it really isn't that far-fetched. Every sim racing game has a dedicated area where it exceeds all its competitors. Assetto Corsa, one of the older titles released in 2014, is still continuously growing and, as far as player numbers go, the biggest game that isn't iRacing. The reason behind its success? It's not the wide range of variety content pushed out by Kunos. It's not an integrated ranked multiplayer system. What is actually accountable is the easy accessibility for modders, or rather, the modding community. Community made free extensions like the custom shaders patch or the Sol weather mod that are still continuously updated and improved by the community, combined with an basically infinite range of free content in form of racetracks and cars, not only keep Assetto Corsa alive, but allow for it to flourish even further. Assetto Corsa's brother, Assetto Corsa Competizione on the other hand, shines with its uncontested level of realism regarding their simulation of the GT3 and GT4 series. In all honesty, SEC doesn't feature heaps of content, but the content that is present is top-notch. Yes, there's also an active multiplayer scene in form of a populated server browser and even daily scheduled ranked races organized by Kunos, but that's just the byproduct of the already excellent base product. Nearly every sim racing title features GT3s and or GT4s, yet most of us are choosing ACC over its competitors and that's the main reason. And the list continues. Every sim racing title has at least one strength that makes it the number one choice in that area. R Factor 2 is regarded as having the overall best physics for a wide range of different cars. Project Cars 2 has an amazing single player story mode and is considered as the go to simulator when switching over from more arcade games like Forza and the likes or initially entering the world of sim racing. iRacing features the best, most competitive and populated multiplayer mode. Race Room features a lot of popular German racing series, for instance the DTM or ADAC GT Masters. You get the point. And if you take a glance at the current player numbers, we can see that even though all before mentioned games are different to each other, every single one of them has an audience it appeals to and therefore solid player numbers. Now my question to you is, where does Autumn Rooster 2 fit in? Or rather, in what area is it the number one choice? Allow me to quickly lead you through my reasoning. Even though there's a lot of variety content, I'd still prefer Seto Corsa, since there most likely is a free mod available that is of decent quality. GT3s and GT4s are decent in AMS2, but ACC is the uncontested leader in that regards. If I want a nice single player story or career mode, or am new to sim racing, then Project Cars 2 would be my game of choice. The physics are by no means bad, but some cars just don't feel right. So if it's all about physics, then R Factor 2 feels a bit more polished and would therefore be the number one candidate. If my main concern is competition or the multiplayer, then I can either go with iRacing if I have the money to finance it, or choose the sim that features my preferred car class and grind there. Since most of them have integrated ranked racing, which should be seen as the standard in the current era. So the point is, considering all of the things I just mentioned, under which circumstances would Autumn Rooster 2 
be the game that outdoes all or at least most other titles. Actually, there kinda is an area. And this area is historically content. Heck, I'll never forget the incredible feeling of driving on the old layouts of the Red Bull Ring, especially since my father, who was and still is an avid Formula 1 fan, always used to tell me stories of his memories about events or actions that happened there. Yes, of course, one could just make an effort and search for an according mod for Seto Corsa. But the thing where I think Olum Rista 2 has the edge is that it makes older content a lot more accessible by outright featuring it in the base game. The McLaren MP412 featuring its signature dual braking system, the Brabham BT46B, older generations of DTM cars, or even the recently released C3 Corvette. This game is filled to the brim with this type of content and Risa keeps continuously adding new stuff. To come back to my previous statement of ams 2s strength being historical content, I think it'd be more accurate to relabel it as Auto Vista 2 strength is niche content, since there's also loads of Brazilian heavy content that's nowhere to be found natively in any other game. So to slowly draw a conclusion, outright saying, once Reza introduces ratings to the multiplayer, the game will thrive is equivalent to trying to predict the weather in two months time. According to the global weather situation, you might have a vague idea of what's to come, but one ever so slight unforeseen event could instantly flip everything and screw the whole prediction. Right now? It's fair to say that things look rather grim and the game is on a decline, but who knows what the next few updates might change or how they will influence the current prediction. In other words, I think the aforementioned types of content, namely historically and Brazilian focused, are ams 2s strong points. Whereas realistically speaking, for the remaining content present in the game, such as GT3s for instance, there simply exist better alternatives. And that is exactly the point I'm trying to make. Every game needs an initial, preferably unique, selling point that lures potential players in. If the game then also turns out to have a decent multiplayer and decent physics in our case, you have the perfect recipe to a healthy game with a bright future. At least given that the unique selling point, whatever it might be, is appealing to a somewhat wide range of potential players. For AMS2, the initial expectations were that it's gonna be the perfect mix between Project Cast 2 amazing graphics and Audible One's realistic physics. What ended up happening though is that we received Project Cast 2's graphics, but also a lot of its engine's flaws, which in turn still makes certain cars feel iffy and turned down a chunk of the initial Automobilista 1 community, since their high expectations in regards to physics just weren't met. And this, combined with the reasons I stated before, leads me to the conclusion that the main thing separating Automobilista 2 from its competitors is the native, historical and Brazilian niche content. Lastly, to come back to my very strong statement at the beginning, whether AMS2 is dying or not, solely depends on yourself and what you expect from it. If your main concern are GT3s, then yes, AMS2 might be dying, since other games such as ACC are a more dedicated option and therefore will also appear more attractive to like-minded people and have a higher chance of drawing them in. On the flip side, historically inclined folks are probably more likely to stick to AMS2 and enjoy its broad variety in that regards, which in turn might lead to a boost of this specific type of player. So basically, Auto Rooster 2 is in a sense like Schrodinger's cat, where it's simultaneously dead and alive, depending on what you expect from it. Now, with that said, please feel free to let me know your opinion about that matter, especially since I feel like this video ended up being a bit more philosophically inclined than I originally intended it to be, which therefore leaves a lot of room for discussions and argumentations for both sides. 
What I'd really like to know though is what prompted you to give AMS2 a go or rather what made it or even still makes it appealing to you. So yeah, anyways, if you enjoyed this video or got something useful out of it, you could consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one and take care.